Hey guys, and welcome back to Minecraft Feed the Beast Die Wolf 21.5.2 mod pack thingy! <laughs> and as the beaming white light to show, will show you, I have a build plan for this. But first, we need to get up to the top of this cliff. So I'm building myself a stairway. Uh, jungle wood, because, you know, it's what I had in abundance after making all the rubber stuff. Um, and I decided that a straight sort of diagonal stair would not do, right? So I started throwing these uh, these platforms halfway in. Um, this is also one of my first attempts at using the, the camera ah, <laughs> creeper. Sorry, uh, one of my first attempts at using the uh, camera studio mod. So you will have to forgive me for some of the dodgy uh, um, angles. Like, who knew that the camera stopped panning when you died? Uh, I didn't. Look at this. Talk about a dodgy camera angle. Uh, it's alright, should start up again soon though. So where was I? What was I talking about? Scaffolding. I always think scaffolding is an amazing thing for um, like supportive structures. They they look really good at sort of being, you know on, on real builds, like in the real world, they've got that, that lattice work of iron. Um, I, I think scaffold that makes a real good job at kind of uh, emulating. Emulating is the word I look for there, emulating that look. Uh, so I've got up to my next flight and I'm thinking <sighs> it's kind of just a zigzag stare at the moment and that, that's all right it's doable it's 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 a good thing especially when the, the scaffold's coming again but there's a space at the top here so I, I decided to, to carve a little bit out and I'm like mm, well what do you find halfway upstairs well I don't know about you guys but last time I went to the beach and I walked up one of those so I had more stairways about halfway up there was a, a, a nice little bench with a plaque on the back and some like flower boxes all around so that's what i've gone for here uh this was completely like the stairs i planned the bit at the top i planned this thing here no it's a bit right so here we are at the top um and first off i'm clearing space now uh, and miss is delivering all the things that i completely forgot to make um as we all know ground preparation is quite an important thing in minecraft when you're making stuff and here we go, we're starting to build some of the main structure. I'm building uh, a, a plinth, you know, a pedestal, some sort of display apparatus for my nether portal. Because, um, you know, it, it's going to be one of my major mo uh, modes of transport. I'm, I'm not too into the mistcraft books this time around, at least until I go actually into the mist ages. So I'm going to use the nether portal to get around the map. Um, so I'm um, like, right, well what do I do here? Um, I like di diamond type shapes, you know, or like, well, not diamond, octahedron. Um, they're, they're particularly nice in Minecraft, so I thought I'd give that a go. Um, now you can see my, my excellent camera work here has completely got the wrong angle on what I'm doing. But that's alright, because I realise that I do that in a little bit and I, and I shift the, the camera angle. But here I'm just kind of working through the sides, trying to make the pattern nice. Yeah, aesthetically pleasing. Because I could have just put straight sides, but I, I tried that. It looked bad. So uh, yeah. So just filling in the top here. And one thing that I noticed almost straight away, that's a great bit expansive red. Um, I'm doing it all in the bloodstone uh, brick, mainly because it's a new block, and I'd like to see what I can do with it. So it, here we come to the actual purpose. I put these this on there. Um, I actually end up messing about with the portal quite a few times to try and get the look right, at least the balance from bottom to top. So yeah, here we go. You can see that I've got this kind of this rounded off um, cutout, imprint, embossing, I don't know, whatever word you want to use there. I put that on the side of the pedestal just to, as I say, take away the, the stark redness. Uh, and I think the red and black, um, as I discovered on the cake machine, is a very, very good, uh, good colour combination. Uh, so yeah, I've put down some dirt underneath and kind of naturalised it, if you'll uh, allow me that term. Uh, made it look a bit more of a, uh, a thing, uh, a natural slope. And now I'm just kind of working with the design. I, I'm, I'm not really liking the great big space of black. Uh, so I, I tried a lot of things. I tried changing the, the, the stair configuration. I ended up putting love hearts on the side of it by accident. I got rid of that immediately. Um, I even tried cobble post. No, that didn't work either. So I just went for, as you can see, um, squashing it down a little bit and then putting the the brick as opposed to the fine brick around the edge as opposed to the, the, the great big chunky brick like you get stone bricks. Um, so here I have a little problem with um, slime, so that's alright, you just beat them off down the, down the hill and it all works fine. 
Uh, so I went with the uh, sandstone stair, well not sand, sandstone brick stair, um, something obviously that comes with, I believe it's Tinker's Construct, you mix uh, bricks and sand and you get this lovely sort of uh, buffy cream type thing. And here I am taking down the portal because the balance isn't right, uh, there's a lot of that. I even get bored halfway through, go and craft some other things, take it down a bit further. Uh, my whole idea at this point is to raise it up a bit. Um, the main reason being is when I got to the bottom of the hill, I could not see it at the top. I could literally see half the portal. That's rubbish. The whole point of this is to make the portal stand out more, instead of just being this obsidian box. Um, yeah, so I went with uh, chiseled bone, fancy chiseled bone, fancy chiseled bone around the outside uh, for the corners of the portal, just try and give it a bit more definition because that, that square thing is a little bit annoying. Um, and here I'm dealing with the great big stark redness of it all. Uh, oh, it's just it so big and red. Um, I, I've actually tried out many different patterns in a creative world trying to. Um, liven it up without being too busy because I, I just kept on getting too too much uh, and these semicircles is what I went for in the end and that was me disappearing to the nether oh look at that okay so I'd, I'd messed around made the uh, the portals a lot bigger and when I gone out and had a proper look from the bottom it just it needed a top of some description it just needed a top so uh, here I just put up some fences and then pop a top, uh, put a fence top on it. I think these these metal fences look amazing. And I'm going to put some lava in. <laughs> I'm dead. So after coming back and getting all my stuff, um, I quickly just throw the last bits of lava in there. And we should have at this point, da -da -da -da, once I've removed all the dirt, that is pretty much the building in its entirety. Good. Even a pig man come along to join us. Here at Mistech, we pride ourselves in providing economic and efficient fuel supplies. Here in Creeper Valley, we pump and refine oil, providing you with the purest fuel. We know how much you like an easy life, but not us. Our company is constantly expanding to bring you better resources. Why not test our new lava supply, pumped by us for your convenience? We understand and respect the need for an eco-friendly system. Skeletons will always shoot you. Zombies are always going to eat your face. Creepers got a creep. But they can all go get screwed. After all, they're only going to blow up all your hard work. Mistech, providing fuel by raping the earth. And here we are in the pouring rain. It serves only to accent how amazing my build is. I mean, look at that just like splendiferous piece of building at the top there. Uh, a, a, a plinth to be proud of, a stairway that just flows majestically down the curves of the cliffs. Yeah. Hi guys, um, I hope you appreciated the little um, uh, build log thing for how I did that uh, and I hope you appreciated the music, um, big shout out to Step Nest and oh I've lost his name, I've written it down because I could never remember it, and Tim Ismag, yeah, can't, can, can never remember how to pronounce that last bit, right, um, what have I done in these couple of days since building that, I hear you say? Of course you said that. Well, mainly, I've been chilling out with these two guys here. My terrifying guards. Uh, all they are is um, an armor stand with uh, broken hazmat and some heads on, but I... I think they serve to warn people that if they break into my so uh, storage room, they're going to have um, all sorts of trouble to pay. Yeah? Uh, also, we have these pistons on the wall, um, hooked up to... Ah, there's a, a just a redstone torch under there being turned off by this and then that's being fed into here. Um, this is growing experience berries. No, I'm not. I'm not. Oh, look, there's a wisp down here. But yeah, these are growing experience berries. And anyone who's played with the Natura pack will know that these bushes uh, need total darkness. So that's, what, that's why that's there, so it's to make it convenient and actually still grow. Uh, I've also been making little mini resource machines down this way. Um, we have my obsidian generator, which is an aqueous accumulator feeding on water all around it. That feeds up into this igneous extruder and this lava ender tank feeds down, making me obsidian that I don't have to mine, uh, which is just like, 
Ah, oh, when you start using a lot of obsidian, you'll know how amazing that is not having to mine it all. Uh, over here on this eucalyptus tree, we have environmental controls. The first thing, notice the rain, but no noise. Now that's not because um, I've disabled all the noise. Um, there you go, you, you probably just heard that, hopefully. Um, it's this rain muffler thing up here. Um, not that one, this one. Let me just uh, find the mufflers. So, rain muffler. It's water surrounded by uh, eight of these things, which is a note block with eight bits of wool. Doesn't sound like a lot, but you go and build one on short notice. Oh, there's a lot of effort. And then this thing, uh, another thing from Extra Utilities, the Magnum Torch, which is very expensive and stops mobs um, spawning in a, a radius around. Um, talking of uh, weather control and stuff like that, I've been getting on with some bees. Um, now I have noticed over here that I, I have a, a little issue where I'd set up this nice automatic feeding system and these cultivated bees from here fed into this and changed my noble queen. Which is a little bit annoying but that's alright because I've got the majestic strain here and I'm moving up towards the uh, imperial so I can have some royal jelly, make some dissipation charges, use it with the rainmaker machine. <gasps> And one day I'm going to start catching those butterflies. But I'm really glad they've started appearing on my map because it's really nice to have them. Um, yeah, uh, uh, should we um, cut on up to inside the nether? Um, so I, I've hollowed out this area around um, the, the portal. Um, I've even brought some grass with me from the uh, with the gravity gun. Um, and I've made this sort of area. Uh, half slabs on the floor, obviously, bottom half slabs so that uh, monsters don't spawn. Um, uh, through here we have a button hooked up to this door. That's quite nice. Now you've noticed the ridiculous length pulse here. This is made by this thing. Programmable redneck controller. Now you look at this and you get all confused. Don't worry. I also got very confused about this. I know how to use maybe three of these settings. So I'm not even going to embarrass myself by trying to explain that. Just know that there's like buttons hooked up to it and then it get, it extends the pulse. That That's all that, that needs to be known here. Um, also on the other side, buttonless, con uh, buttonless door. Um, there is actually a button if you watch there. Um, that's that's our little secret. Um, I, I, I found out how to do that on, I believe it was Sark's channel. Um, if you don't know who he is, go check him out. He does all sorts of amazing stuff. Sort of like on the level of Sleth Bling, you know, where they do things that are just like not of the Minecraft game. There's just things that blow your absolute brain away. Um, so yeah, I can't really give much more of a recommendation than that. Um, and here is what I've actually been building here. Um, it's a... Uh, so to make one strip of light light up from this is easy, or to make them all light up from, from this one thing is easy. <coughs> Excuse me. But trying to get this little pulse around a person is actually quite difficult. Do you want to see how difficult? I'll show you how difficult. Look, I left a hole in here just to just to demonstrate. We have this repeating system, and that goes all the way down there. Um, it's got three major components. Um, first one is the uh, trip wire hooked up to the comparator. Then there is this, um, I'll call it the transmission line. It's just a great big long unbroken line of redstone. Um, and then we have the red net system, which if I jump through the hole here, you'll notice carries a pulse of this length through. I can't remember how much, it's like a signal strength of 10, something like that. I can't remember exactly what I say it to. Um, but that then gets fed through to the subtraction side of the comparator, which then sends out a pulse, uh, you know, yay long, which will trip off the redstone um, repeater and fire up all the the lights. Um, simple in concept, quite hard to actually um, initiate in practice, but there we go, I did it. Yay, go me. Uh, and I'll just show you again, door closed. Door open. Right, so my next project, as I think I'm probably going to wrap this up as a short episode, is to make this look better, because at the moment it's just uh, walls over here. And then um, 
back in the real world, the real world, the overworld, it's the overworld of course. Round the back of my cake machine I have started marking out an area for building a tinker's construct yard. Um, hello, what's that over there? What is that? A chicken or something? Oh, it's an item frame. Okay, right. <laughs> Just staring at a square in the in the background. Yeah. Um, where was I? A Tinker's Construction Yard. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm thinking I'm going to go for a bit of a uh, a steampunky uh, look for that. Sort of dark woods and brass. Uh, maybe some sort of bricks if I can uh, get that working in. Um, and once I've got that done, work on this path system. I mean. The animals need moving, so I'm probably going to put an animal farm in somewhere. Um, probably using the mine factory reloaded stuff for that. The uh, like the thing I'd put up here, the rancher and the uh, the sewage system, the fertilizers and stuff like that. But just to give you an idea before I cut, this is the scale of the build I'm going to be going for. I think it's quite nice. It's got it's got a good good size to it. I'm not sure about this lean-to that I'm going to put on the side of the cylinder, but I'll work on that, and I need to make a square base on the bottom. But you're just going to have to wait for next time for that. Um, right, well, bye-bye. Thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. Um, next time I may be on my own. Next time I might not. You'll just have to wait and see. Bye-bye.